One day, Quacko was thinking. That's right, thinking. What am I going to play? Sometimes it's about buying low and selling high, or buying high and selling low, depending on how the uh, market swings. Especially in the coronavirus times, the market's as flat as a pancake. But we're going to play the Motley Fool's Buy Low, Sell High and see if we can make it rich in this world of uh, computing and retail. Well, retail is an investment nowadays, no chance. Uh, computing, retail, and I believe property are the three on there. Anyway, join us as we look at the box review the contents and review the game. Right, so just to do the unboxing, don't really normally do the unboxings on the older games, but I thought I'd instead of doing that, I'd just pull through the box. The box is a very 90s-esque box, this um, buy low, sell high font, and uh, the Motley Fool titles are very classic. We've seen those before. Um, the foolish game of high stake investing, uh, slightly kind of Doll. Oh, and there you go, the, the imagery, 1990s called it, wants its style back, and that's perfectly encapsulated by this Motley Fool, which um, really keeps to its its own branding. Okay, and then we've got a repetition again, we've got a repeat of the previous um, imagery, obviously from the box itself. The only difference being that um, you've now got uh, sort of a bit more clearer um, font here, um, in the sense that it says instruction booklet. So it tells you what it is, which is so useful when you need to know what you need to know about what's going on with the game. And um, then you've got here this this really odd kind of thing about what I can only describe as you get these if you ever get investment um, situations, you'll get this the the way that it has who the specialists are and where they're looking for info. As you may probably know, the Motley Fool is, is actually an investment um, company, investment uh, advisory service, and so that kind of just denotes what they're doing. Although, obviously, there's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek to that. Okay, you've got your cards, you've got your counters, you then got your pieces that obviously you know, retail, which, as I recently said, retail is probably the Oil. Um, Doing okay with the oil tech, which is a bit, you know, good up and down, but now we just because of the pandemic. But the, the, I mean, the look of the, the cards is very classic, though. So there's balls, and of course, you do get, I believe, here there's another ball, and you get a bear, there's a bear, so you get bull and bear market. So wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we're denoting what the market's all about. And then we've got the 90s imagery on these items here. And then, of course, the Motley Fool symbol, which is the Jester's hat. So, all good, um, all consistent with what the brand is, what the imagery is, and what um, you probably will need to know about the Motley Fool. But now, join me as I go and review Buy Low, Sell High by the Motley Fool. So, the good thing about Buy Low, Sell High is that the mechanics of the market are intuitive. Unlike the real market sells, which is slightly crazy. Um, and with these markers, it's easily defined. They are a little bit cumbersome, and to be fair, they do fall over, and they can get knocked over, and they can take out a whole row of the market. For instance, if you just, I've just set the, the red up here, so this is the oil side here. And you're supposed to keep these on full display, and if you just accidentally tap them, they go over like that, which is never good. But 
it's clear and concise enough that it makes players understand where they are, their position in the game. And with this circle around here where you have oh, well, two, three, four players, you're able to understand what exactly the situation is because players play cards as they move along and you get things like dividend cards which you can see here but then you also get cards that denote the market forces the market going up there that's a bull market and then of course you get the market going down which is a bear market as they mentioned there and I think that's quite interesting because each player has the ability to play the cards as if they, um, there is no control over it. Now, interestingly enough, actually, there is a solo therein you can play this game, where what you do is you play uh, yourself against the market itself, and you can basically just randomly pull out cards and lay them down each turn, and that can help you or hinder you, because obviously it depends on what you start to invest in, but it's certainly an interesting way of playing the game. I'm not sure how dynamic it is, but it certainly adds to uh, nature of um, the kind of a ra rational being that is the market and I like that sort of circumstance, circumstantial play. Um, I'm not a massive fan of keeping the tokens because I think that they're so cumbersome and they do lead to uh, what sometimes they get lost, I'm sorry I'm just putting something back into the book, but sometimes they get lost and some of them are um, because of their uh, centre of gravity do uh, stand up better than others. Um, the little hats as well don't really add much to it. I appreciate that the Motley 4 are doing it as part of their offer of option, but it does seem a little bit um, absurd, let's say. But if you want to, if you're playing as a solo game, you can just use these to track uh, the market itself, and that actually plays as a far more interesting game. Um, so there is a way, there's a nature in which you can probably uh, manipulate the game a little bit to make it far more playable and far more interesting. Anyway, I'll do the uh, proper review in a second and hopefully you'll join me for that. So, buy low, sell high. What is it? It's a lost opportunity. Yes, okay, people know who Rainier Nazir is. I mean, we've come across Babel, we've come across Lost Cities, and probably you may have come across Taj Mahal as well. This is a game that certainly has interesting mechanics, and I know there was an addition, there was actually an original market game that was out there before, which this is basically well merged with. Um, but I think that you can actually uh, soup the game up and play it in a particular way, which I will I'll write down the, the way that I see the rules for the game, which will, I think will make it more interesting to play. Um, however, the game as a, a market game, solely market game, has some interesting. Um, facets and, and it's certainly quite dynamic um, it also allows for a level of um, market intuition which is quite interesting as well but it does play in a way that's quite stodgy and I, I mean in the most respectful way stodgy because it does become a little bit stuttery especially if you are playing a four play game for instance and you are playing number two you can basically work the market in your favour and uh, it's, it's far more geared towards that. Um, however, overall the game has enough um, body and depth to make it still an interesting play for um, groups of players and especially people who are interested in markets, especially people who are interested in finance because of the fact that it is so much about the herd mentality as well as also about the um, dynamics of bull and bear markets and how they operate by point basis and how they can be shifts and swings which can end up making you a millionaire and making you poor. That all said, it's not the, the best of the market games out there and in fact actually it's not the worst of the, the games out there on the front about markets and about the economics but it's certainly not one that I would turn to readily in the future. Anyway, that was buy low, sell high. Uh, this was Simon, this was GameCup, thank you.